purpose of this video is to prove the theorem that if the operators a and b commute, then there exists a set of eigenfunctions, the set psi n, which are simultaneously eigenfunctions of a and b, meaning that both a and b are simultaneously well-defined. What this means is that, uh, that the a and b operators represent things that we are allowed to know simultaneously and precisely. In other words, not subject to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle limitations. And so we're going to prove that um, psi is a not if psi is a non-degenerate eigenfunction of a operator with eigenvalue a. This is getting to be um, our standard way of, of dealing with these various theorems. Just write down our, our friend the eigenvalue equation itself. Um, and then if we go ahead and operate on that eigenvalue equation with the second operator, B operator, and so we've done that to the left-hand side, B operator is now acting on A operator, acting on psi, and then on the right-hand side, B operator acts on the eigenvalue A times psi. And then we can pull the eigenvalue A out in front of uh, our expression because A, of course, being a scalar value is not actually affected by B operator, no matter what B operator is, and so the right-hand side becomes eigenvalue a times the result of the b uh, operator acting on the function psi. Since we're looking at the case where a and b are known to commute with each other, what that means is that we can reverse the order of operation for our left-hand side term. So we can, instead of having a operate on psi and then operate on that result with b, in the second line, in the third line, we've reversed it so that B operates on psi first, followed by A operating on, on that particular result. And then our right-hand side's not changed because we just have the B operator on the right-hand side, but we can group uh, that our terms on the right-hand side in, in a suggestive way that we can say, well, um, really B operating on psi is some other function, and that would be an eigenfunction because this certainly looks like an eigenvalue equation since the right-hand side has an eigenvalue term in front of it. And so by doing this we recognize then that the B operator acting on psi is in fact itself an eigenfunction. It's an eigenfunction of A with eigenvalue A if we just look at the equation that we generated. right? When we act with, with A on B times psi we get B times psi, B acting on psi back again with eigenvalue A. Since the wave function psi is not degenerate there's only one eigenfunction that corresponds to that eigenvalue A. And so what this means then is that B operating on psi has to equal psi itself or just differs by psi um, from by some particular constant. And all this means is that of course that B is following its own eigenvalue equation when it acts by itself on psi. And so we're going to call that constant term that relates um, the result of B acting on psi, we're going to call that little b, eigenvalue b. <clears throat> so if we have an eigenvalue equation for the A operator and we know that A and B commute, then we know that when B operates on psi that that leads to an eigenvalue equation as well. And the only difference between the eigenvalue equation for the operator and the eigenvalue equation for the B operator is that the eigenvalue itself could be different, but the wave function um, that satisfies that eigenvalue equation for the two cases, that is exactly the same. And the reason why this is significant then is that what this means is that both the um, both the uh, properties A and B we're interested in that we represented with the operators A and B are simultaneously well defined, meaning we can know we can know the values at the same time and we can know them infinitely precisely. We're not uh, bound by uh, any kind of Heisenberg uncertainty principle limit. And the reason why we want to have this uh, uh, commuter tests available to us in the future is we're going to have more complicated cases of operators where it's not going to be obvious to us like it was in the case of momentum and position for the, um, the one-dimensional particle that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle applied that we're going to want to just use the commutator test to figure out whether we can know uh, about two properties A and B simultaneously or not. <clears throat>